Today, I want to test out a rust removal solution that's 10 times cheaper and lasts three times longer than Evaporust, which essentially makes it 30 times cheaper. Although the catch is, I'm gonna have to make it myself. First of all, I'm nowhere near smart enough when it comes to chemistry to figure this out. So all credit for this solution goes to the channel Beyond Ballistics. If you want to see the original video that I saw, I'm going to put it down in the description. Thankfully, this solution only uses easy to get chemicals. I got mine off Amazon, and if you want to get the same ones that I did if it works, then there's an affiliate link down in the description. So the reason I want to test this is because I've been working on this little KLR250, and there's a little bit of rust in the tank. You can just about see there it's actually not as bad as it looks it's kind of only in the throat area of the tank this tank was sort of three quarters full of fuel which i think has kind of saved it because anything above that is a little bit rusty but everything below looks pretty much brand new i'm also going to be testing it at the same time on this kawasaki toolkit that came with the bike which is uh, it's going to be a pretty good test of rust removal. And I'm probably going to chuck anything else that's rusty in with it as well, just to see how well it does. First things first, this tank's still got about half a tank of fuel in it, so I've got to take it off and drain it. And thankfully, that's a really easy process with this bike. Just a few screws to take off the body panels, then I can remove the seat, one bolt in the back of the tank, and then two on either side. And as you can see, this tank isn't in the best of shape right at the top. Thankfully, this rust doesn't cover the rest of the tank inside. It's only really this bit you can see here. So for every litre of water I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using 100 grams of citric acid crystals and 40 grams of sodium carbonate powder. And I decided to make roughly about 7.5 litres of this. So I started with 7.5 litres of warm water. Then I grabbed some scales and pretty roughly measured out 750 grams of citric acid crystals. And for some reason it didn't look right to me so I started doubting myself and had to go back to the video. I think this definitely looks like too much, I'm going to have to check the recipe again. But I shouldn't have doubted myself because it was right. Okay, I think that is right. So I dumped it in. And then measured out 300 grams of sodium carbonate. And just before I put that in I gave it a little stir. Then I threw it in and it fizzed up quite a bit. This went on for quite a while. Then when it was finished doing whatever reaction it was doing, then I had to add the final ingredient which was washing up liquid, which supposedly acts as a surfactant, whatever that is. Google says it reduces the surface tension of a liquid, basically allowing it to spread out further. And also that they stir up activity on the surface of what you're cleaning to trap dirt and remove it from the surface, both of which are good things for rust removal. And I don't know what part of me thought this was a good idea, but it was never going to end well. Decided the jug's probably a better option. So I filled up the tank with a lovely set of jugs and then put the rest of the rusty bike toolkit in the solution. I also remembered I had this big rusty pair of pipe pliers a friend gave me. And if I'm going to leave it overnight, why not throw them in there too? So I came back on my lunch from work the next day and I was a bit excited. So excited that I forgot to even turn on the microphone. But as you can see, the rust removal solution's doing something. It's even made little shapes in the foam of the tools. And I was a little bit worried initially when I pulled this first one out because it looked quite dark. I didn't know if it'd done something weird to the metal. But it was quite cool how you could actually make out that it did say Kawasaki on it now. And as I'm pulling these parts out, I can't believe how much better they look than when they went in. They were absolutely covered in pretty deep pitted rust before and now there was only just sort of a fraction and even when I rubbed it with my fingers it kind of just came straight off even though it looked like it was still there it just washed off basically and it was like this for basically all of the parts I say basically because this one was pretty bad when it went in it was definitely the worst out of all of them and it sort of cleaned up so I pulled out the rest of the tools one by one 
And all of them were pretty good to be fair, they all cleaned up to some extent. And then I decided to turn my attention to the tank, which turned out to be a pretty big disappointment. As you can see it was kind of a little bit flaked off but I was expecting a lot more of that to be gone. I did slosh it around a bit when I put it in there and I thought that would be enough. It clearly wasn't so I tried sloshing it around again hoping that it, the liquid moving around inside might break a bit more off. I've heard about the method of putting bolts and nuts and things in there but I didn't really have a large amount of nuts to do that with. But essentially sloshing it around didn't really do anything. There was definitely a certain amount of rust that had been removed and you can see where the fuel level protected the metal behind it that I was on about earlier. But ultimately I wasn't happy with this level of finish. So I spoke to the camera with no microphone for a few minutes and basically explained that the reason why I thought it didn't work is because it wasn't submerged and it, I just kind of sloshed the solution onto it and then hoped that was going to be enough so I decided I'd fill it up as much as I could to try and completely submerge the rust in the fluid. And then I got distracted wire brushing tools. But this led me to make a bit of a discovery about how good this solution is. I realised that with a really light wire brushing, these were actually a lot better than I thought they were, and that kind of dark colour that was on them before came off really easily. And even the C-spanner, which was the worst out of all the tools, with a bit of scrubbing, it came up way better than I thought it ever would have done. All this gave me hope for the tank, but I was going to need more of the solution to fill the thing entirely, so I started making up the rest of what I had. And here's a little tip if you decide to make this. Make sure there's no washing up liquid in the tub before you add the chemicals, otherwise, predictably, this is going to happen. And you're just going to end up with an entire tub of foam. <laughs> Okay, I've been stirring this a while so all of the bubbles have melted and I'm going to transfer it into here and fill it all the way up to the top so it can work on all this top area and that bit that's still rusty inside. And I don't recommend trying to film at the same time as doing this because this happens. And after a quick clean up I rush back to work. So I'm back again after work and as you can see it looks like this is kind of, must have expanded or something, so I'm glad I didn't lock the lid on that because it could have blown off, but I don't know whether to leave it overnight again or just tip it out now and have a look. You should leave it overnight. Uh, what should I do? Yeah, leave it overnight. Hmm. You should definitely leave it overnight. I'm going to dump it out now. And this is where my impatience doesn't pay off because this has probably been sitting in there about three and a half hours while I've been at work and it just wasn't long enough for it to do its job. Essentially, that's not actually made much of a difference whatsoever. It kind of looks the same inside, I'll show you. Looks a tiny bit better there, but the inside is kind of the same. Still not great, so I think this is a, an overnight job. You don't say. Looking at it. So I'm going to put it all back in again, and we'll try it again overnight and see how it looks tomorrow. Now the toolkit had already been cleaned pretty well, but I thought I'd see how clean I could get it. You can see with this spanner that I haven't scrubbed yet just how much the rust removal did. And with a little WD-40 and a little wire brushing, it came up really nice. And like I mentioned before, this darker finish it kind of gave some of the tools a little bit of wire brushing and it was gone. You might think I've spent way too long cleaning up this rusty old motorcycle toolkit, and I definitely have, but it was pretty satisfying to see all of the kit going from this to this. And although it wasn't exclusively the rust cleaner that did this, I don't think wire brushing alone would have cleaned these up this way. So I think this is a pretty good real world use case of this solution. 
So the next day I came back hoping that it was going to have cleaned the tank the same as it did with the tools. And after this lid slammed down more times than I cared to count. Until I got so annoyed I just took it off. This time I was pleasantly surprised with the tank. Right, the cap slamming down pissed me off too many times. So I decided to just take it off. But then I could see in the tank. And it was pretty good this time. Although it was still obviously pitted from where the rust was, there was actually no rust on there anymore. Okay, so I'm pretty impressed so far. That's quite a good result for something that's quite cheap to make. It's pretty much completely dissolved all of the rust. There is some little specks in there, but that, it's all loose, like it's all moving around, and I reckon a few more flushes out and it'll be completely clean. Would Evaporust have been any better than this solution? And to be honest, I can't really say and I also am probably never going to find out because this does exactly what I need it to and it's pretty cheap to make it's definitely going to be cheaper to make than Evaporus would be to buy if I was to buy 10 litres or roughly 11 litres like I made of this it would cost over 80 pounds to buy Evaporus so I know that I'm going to stick with this for all future projects anything else on this channel is just going to be using this to get rid of rust because why would I use anything else now? I've seen a lot of other channels using Evaporust um, and to be honest the reason why I made this video is because or the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I saw it and I thought that's a better better option potentially and I'm not being paid to sell Evaporust so if these people are and I'm not saying they are they've got motivation to not tell you the best option even if well they might not know about it to be honest even if they discovered this method they've kind of got motivation not to tell you about it so i'm telling you about it when i'm not sponsored by anyone um i just think it's a really good really good idea it's a really good solution and if anyone's dealing with old bikes and rust like i am then it's a useful thing to know and the best bit about this solution is that it doesn't use acid like most other rust removal solutions do most rust removal solutions I've seen use either sulfuric or some kind of other acid. And although this does use citric acid, it uses the citrate ions once it's reacted with the, car the sodium carbonate, it actually forms citrate ions, I think. And it uses not acid, but it uses a process called chelation. And don't ask me what that is, because I don't know. But the original video that I've linked down below explains it way better than I could. But as far as I understand it, chelation is not like acid, so it doesn't damage the base metal anywhere near as much as acid would. I've used methods before, such as using Harpic. Um, I know you can use Harpic 10X to clean exhaust headers, and I've done that before and it works. Um, I've also used it to clean the tank of my BMW, but I used 10 bottles of that and also mixed it with a load of water and left it overnight and the results were good but I still don't think they were as good as this has worked. So I will definitely be using this method in future instead because it doesn't damage the base metal anywhere near as much as acid would. The guy explains in the other video that essentially uh, it's as strong an acid as tomato juice is so it's not doing any heavy damage to the metal it's literally just attacking the rust and nothing else so going forward i'm going to use this single batch of rust removal solution and see how many bikes i can do with it see how much rust i can remove with it and i'm going to keep track of it and i'm basically well i'm going to use this youtube channel as a track of how much or how long this lasts and how long it works for so you'll have to come back if you want to see how many bikes this solution makes it through. I'm going to be working on lots more old rusty bikes on this channel. So if you want to see more bikes like this one and this one right here, don't worry about what's behind my hand. That's coming in a later video. Then thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.